Okay, so getting back to uh, multipath, I alluded to this last time, but there's a very important and practical um, situation in which multipath occurs, and this is actually what leads to larger um, path loss exponents than two. And it's the following situation. It's called plain earth path loss. So consider a signal uh, propagating over a flat plane. This is equation one in your notes. And what I'm about to give you is figure one. So we have a transmit antenna over here. We have a receive antenna over here. And flat earth between them. Distance from transmitter receiver is D. The height of the transmitter is HT. The height of the receive antenna is HR. And we have two paths of propagation. One is the direct path distance d1, and the other is the path that bounces off the earth, with total distance d2. So obviously d2 is greater than d1. So let me write that down for you. Parameters are HT, which is transmitter height, uh, HR, the receiver height, or the receiver, and uh, both these are the antenna heights. D is the distance from transmitter to receiver. Oh, there's one other. Uh, parameter that I didn't that I'll include, that is r. And r is the coefficient of reflection. In other words, uh, when the signal bounces here, if, if the amplitude of the signal changes in any way, r captures that. So it doesn't change on reflection. It actually changes by 180 degrees. Um, <laughs> just multiply by minus 1. So in practice, what we're going to say is r is equal to minus 1. R is the reflection coefficient. <coughs> and what I mean by that is that's the reflection. You can also think of this as the reflection gain. In other words, it's multiplied by the reflective path, the reflected path. So the received signal is, okay, if, um, if uh, this path at the receiver is, uh, has an amplitude of A, then we'll have A sine by FD. It doesn't really matter what A is. Uh, it, won't, uh, it won't change the analysis very much. 2 pi FT plus 2 pi FD1 over C, like we said. Okay, that's the direct path. The path that bounces off the Earth, it's the same, uh, same amplitude, 
multiplied by this reflection gain R. R A sine 2 pi F T plus 2 pi F D2 over C. Okay, so it turns out, as I mentioned, if the ground can be modeled as a perfect conductor, by the way, this is equation two in your notes. So if the ground is a perfect conductor, gain is equal to minus 1. So uh, it turns out that when the uh, when an, an electromagnetic signal or electromagnetic wave hits a conductor, the action of the, of the conductor is to zero out that signal within the conductor. And so the reflection, what you're seeing as a reflection is actually um, caused by the induced fields within the conductor to zero out that signal inside the conductor. So to zero it out, the reflection gain has to be minus one. Okay, so now, um, so before we had the following trig identity, sine A plus sine B is equal to two sine A plus B over two cos A minus B over two. Um, now what we need is sine A minus sine B. Can anyone see how to change this identity? So um, what I can do, what is what, what happens if... Uh, so we... Uh, one way to think of this is this could be sine A plus, and sine is an odd function, this could be sine A plus sine minus B. And then I could substitute through minus B for B, and I get A minus B here, sine A minus B, cos A plus B. So in fact what I'm doing is I'm reversing the cos and the sine. Identity, I can take the two out, so I get two a cos a plus b. So that's two pi f t plus two pi f t divided by two, which is two pi f t uh, plus two pi f d one over c plus two pi f d two over c divided by two. Oops, doesn't really matter what that is. 